Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. It's a glorious Tuesday. The sun is shining. It's kind of warm here in Pretoria. Everything is good. And you know what else is good? Disc plates. They're dope metal prints. You should buy them. Look at them. 15% off if you use the coupon code in the video description. Pick them up. They also have the exclusive license for Cyberpunk now. And with all of the news we're talking about today, that's going to be really exciting. Imagine have a Cyberpunk disc plate while you play Cyberpunk and then Keanu Reeves says you're breathtaking. But really he's talking about your decor in your room because you picked up a disc plate. Use the link in the video description. There's some cool stuff that's happened. There are two conferences going on right now that are kind of a big deal. One is a, the one that pretty much everybody's paying attention to, which is Gamescom, which is going on in Cologne, Germany. But then we also have Hot Chips. Which is a pretty interesting one that's going down. And we got a lot of some it's just cool things, cool things happening. Uh, included, I didn't include this as an article, but when Lisa Sue was asked about Threadripper at Hot Chips yesterday, uh, she couldn't commit that they would be coming out this year, but rather that we would have more information about Threadripper this year. So don't expect Threadripper 3000 this year, would be my guess. Anyways, that's just a little addendum for you. The coolest thing to come out of Hot Chips is based on this article coming out from a non tech talking about in memory processing by UpMems. Apparently, there are companies that are working on including data processing units in memory sticks to have like just little dim sticks that can also process information. Right now it's still a work in progress where they can actually make things work and they have eight gigabyte DDR4 sticks with 128 data processing unit to allow the memory to process data simultaneously with the memory, but then there doesn't have to be shared resources and increased latency between the CPU and the memory. And the goal is eventually to get it up to 2048 DPUs per 100 128 gigabytes, it would give it an effective bandwidth of two terabytes per second of data processed. That is fantastic. There's a lot of practical applications of this, not a whole lot for gamers, which is the primary audience of this channel. Uh, that, that's, that's not mentioned just yet, but it could be coming down the pipeline. But it, I mean, for servers and having a ton of stuff still done on the memory instead of having to offload it to the CPU and then go back to the memory, this is actually pretty remarkable and something that could uh, help cut server costs and make things a bit more manageable. Or it could be something that could make your Crisis 4 run fast. Data processing on your memory sticks. This is something you've always wanted. Okay, just don't turn off the computer while you're doing it. But I mean, CPUs are technically volatile as well. They're just not memory. And then let's talk about Cyberpunk 2077. Obviously, I talked about that earlier in the ad spot, except for people who are watching this on Floatplane. Sorry, you just don't get to know what I'm talking about now. They also have the exclusive license for Cyberpunk now. And with all of the news we're talking about today, that's gonna be really exciting. It has been confirmed by Google that Cyberpunk 2077 is indeed coming to Google Stadia. So you can play the game that is probably gonna be one of the most graphically demanding games to come out early next year on basically anything, which is quite good. This is probably one of the biggest launch titles that they could have. In my opinion, it's probably one of the best ones for the platform. You have things like Doom, which are fast paced action shooters, and that's a terrible thing for anything that has the you know latency of any kind with the Stadia Pro controller. But Cyberpunk 2077, single player game, not really all of that latency and sent not that not all that latency sensitive. I'm sure there's a few areas where you need to be quick and you might miss a few things, but this probably is the reason why I would try out Stadia is to play Cyberpunk 2077 at the highest details possible on my freaking Chromebook. This makes a lot of sense. Good job, Google. Although it's a little bit of a slap in the face to NVIDIA who partnered with CD Projekt Red to bring ray tracing to Cyberpunk, but then they're not going to GeForce now, they're going to Stadia. And my guess is that there's probably gonna be like a licensing issue between those two. We'll find out as the time comes out. Anyways, speaking of licensing issues, which has nothing to do with this next article, we have some leaked benchmarks of Intel's Tiger Lake U processors, which include the next generation of CPUs based on 10 nanometers, as well as Project Z graphics inside of it. and what we're finding is that in IPC, it beats the 8700K. This was what advancement finally looks like with Intel freaking being on 14 nanometers for a solid five years, finally going down to 10 nanometers. IPC is getting to the point where a U series processor can beat what was their flagship just a year ago in, in IPC, not in overall, because obviously bore cores and threads, whatever, not the point. What is the point is that the US doesn't know what to do with Huawei at all. Like there's been just, which, hey, you're banned from doing this, but not really. Oh, and we're gonna introduce a tariff here, China, but not really. Hey, you know what, Huawei? You, just, you can't sell here. 
except for the next 90 days, it's totally okay. Because the US and Chinese government is working things out and they have another 90 day export license. Cool, cool, good, good job Trump administration, good job everybody involved with this for keeping it confusing. I totally know what's going on and I don't have to watch a bajillion videos prior to filming hot news to give you guys the skinny. Speaking of skinny though, your wallet's gonna be skinny as well as probably your brain if you're buying one of these, although that's derogatory. I don't really mean it, but I kind of mean it anyways. Supreme burner phones, my friends. You wanna spend way too much on a phone that shouldn't exist just to throw it away because you, you need it? Why does it exist? There's no mention of pricing, but considering that specific burner phone without the Supreme logo costs $33, my guess is that this thing's probably gonna cost about 200. So freaking good job people who buy things for the brand like me and my Linus Tech Tip merch, LDDstore.com. Speaking of stores, oh my gosh. We finally got the release date of the Final Fantasy VIII Remaster, and that is September 3rd. I am calling a public holiday for the UFD office because basically everybody here's f favorite Final Fantasy is VIII because it is by fact the best Final Fantasy that's ever come out. And everybody who's gonna rage down in the comments, can you just shut your mouth? You can just shut up, I'm not listening. La 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 la. Final Fantasy VIII is the best. I don't care about your seven. Aerith dies, who gives a rip? I felt nothing. She deserved it. <laughs> $20, Steam store, I'm, I'm excited. Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, it's all PC, it's all good. And then, do you like jailbreaking iPhones? Well, apparently, Apple had already patched out the ability to jailbreak phones a while ago. And uh, hey, it's back. The, the vulnerability that was needed to jailbreak iPhones is back in the iOS 12.4. So in case you still like doing that, even though Cydia is no longer around, and I mean, honestly, there's plenty of apps on Apple now that you don't really need to jailbreak for. Like, I remember you needed to jailbreak in order to get like Google stuff on your iPhone way back in the day. And now it's just like, just buy the damn app. What's wrong with you people? You know what else is wrong with people? They like to play space simulators. That's a good thing, actually. Kerbal Space Program 2, there's a sequel. I didn't even know that there needed to be a sequel, but there is, and it's arriving next year. Fun. You know what else is fun? A baby in a jar. These pods were designed to simulate the conditions inside a still mother's womb. It's not really, not at all, but Hideo Kojima's biggest mystery of my entire life, Death Stranding, got a six minute gameplay video yesterday at Gamescom, and it still makes me go, what the hell is this game? What the freaking crap, what is, I, like, Metal Gear Solid, at least there's like some plot line I can follow, and Norman Reedus and the baby fetus, I don't understand, you can apparently pee? and it'll grow a mushroom, and then if a lot of people pee in the same place, you can get magic mushrooms? What is this game? I don't understand it, and I think my friend Alessandro Barbosa from GameSpot and Critical Hit says it the best. At this point, I feel like Death Stranding is the joke, and we're all waiting for the punchline. I don't, I don't, I don't even, what is this game? Don't care, because Witcher 3 got a gameplay uh, video for the Nintendo Switch, and it looks like the Switcher is actually remarkably playable. It's gonna be the complete edition. October 15th is the release date, and in case you missed it, we've actually already done a video where we could play the Witcher on the Nintendo Switch. You can check it out right up there over on the UFD Tech channel, because we got Android on it and we did game streaming to it so we could play Ray Traced Witcher on the Nintendo Switch Which is better what than whatever this is gonna be screw this speaking of Android stuff and streaming games to it Nvidia's game streaming service GeForce now is gonna be unrolled out rolled rolled out to Android devices this fall in case you're excited for that And one of the big news is news is news parts about this is that uh, they're actually gonna be implementing RTX technology to GeForce Now. So in case you wanna enjoy that ray trace goodness, uh, you can do that on your phone. But as I've already showed, you can do that with in local game streaming, but cool. You know, waste your data cap on that. Speaking of wasting data caps, Reddit is apparently experimenting with live stream. There's a week long experiment going on for the public access network where you can stream on Reddit for whatever reason. They're testing it now to see if they're gonna do it permanently. I don't understand this. Reddit is both a great place and a cesspool. People shouldn't be live streaming there. You know what you should be streaming? I got bad segues today. Alienware, uh, they announced their 55 inch 120 hertz 4K OLED display at CES and apparently it's gonna be coming out on September 30th. This $4,000 monitor, monitor, Monitor. This is this is a freaking TV OLED monitor, 4K, 120 hertz. It's gonna cost you four thousand dollars. But hot damn, 55 inch. I I I I'm gonna move back to America just to buy this. Speaking of a lot of money, 
$5,000, Apple pshes on your uh, $5,000 and says that they're gonna slap $6 billion on original content for TV Plus, which is their new streaming service that they're gonna be doing. It, I guess, you know, that is kind of what Netflix is doing, just kind of paying for original content. Apple obviously has to compete with Disney Plus. You have also got Netflix in there. We'll see if it works out. I don't know. I don't need more streaming services. I need more games though, especially by Insomniac who did a nice job with Spider-Man on the PS4. Well, they apparently were just acquired by Sony, so that means that their time is over. They're, they're done making good games. Instead, it's, it's facts. Once you're bought by a giant corporation, time's up. And then in something that has nothing to do with gaming or anything else we talked about, there's actually a new hand tracking algorithm developed by Google AI Labs that could allow for real-time translation of sign language. This is something that's actually quite cool for people who are obviously deaf and mute, as well as the non-verbal community for people who have actually been able to learn how to sign to communicate. This is something that means a lot to me, especially with a son whose special needs and is nonverbal, except for his special needs means that he can't actually learn sign language because he doesn't have control over his motor functions. But it's not the point. This is great for people who actually need this. And this is going to be exciting times to have real life translation of sign language. Love it. And I love you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Hot News. We're done there. Reese, get off your phone and click the focus button so I can do the displayed ad spot because I'm going to bend over on the couch. Oh, check it out. Displate.com forward slash UFD tech official. Enter UFD as the coupon code to check out these dope metal prints. They're amazing. They plant 10 trees for every displate you buy. And I'm going to buy, buy, buy. Ain't no lie. Good job, Google.